What's good? I'm Alex, editor and stunt double at Rob Hall Photo, and today I'm going to be comparing the somewhat new Loop Deck Plus against the more classic MIDI the Lightroom Behringer X Touch Mini combo. There's nearly a $200 price difference between the two, but we're going to find out if that price jump is really worth it. Now, on the off chance you're not familiar with either of these, let's catch you up real quick. Over a year ago, I picked up this Behringer X Touch Mini, a lightweight MIDI controller that I use in conjunction with a program called MIDI to Lightroom or MIDI to LR. MIDI to Lightroom is a free program that translates input from a MIDI device into Lightroom commands. And honestly, I've been so happy with it that I donated to the developer because as soon as I got that up and running, my editing time was absolutely crushed. Loop Deck, though, you likely have heard of. It is a control console purpose-built for Lightroom with support for other programs as well. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Loop Deck Plus, the newer of the Loop Deck basic consoles. And for the sake of clarity, Loop Deck did provide this device to me, but no agreements or stipulations were made on the coverage of it. I've been able to use the Loop Deck Plus for a couple of weeks now, and I think it's finally time to pit these two setups against each other. All right, so first things first, price. This MIDI interface is $70, whereas the Loop Deck Plus is $250. And really, the argument for interfaces like these is if they save you even a little bit of time, that needs to be factored into your price argument. And just as an example, if I were to save even 20 minutes on a wedding edit, I've edited over 50 weddings last year. So that's going to be, what, 16 plus hours that I would save just from that single purchase. But let's go over some of the features that each one offers to give you a better idea of what those speed savings look like. Now, a big caveat with layout comparisons is that MIDI the Lightroom actually supports a number of different devices. Those devices can have a pretty wide range of designs, abilities, and price. So I'll drop a link to a list of those compatible devices in the description below. Now, as far as layouts go, that's the most obvious difference between these two. Where the X-Touch is more regimented, it's got clean rows, the Loop Deck Plus I would say has a more organic vibe to it. And despite connotations that might be picked up from those descriptors, I honestly have to give the point to the X-Touch because the Loop Deck actually gives me a bit more of a crowded feel with the way that my hands naturally rest on it. Side note, I do wanna clarify that while neither one of these devices is necessarily terrible on the wrists, they don't fully address the issue of appropriate wrist posture. And thankfully, I do have a few other devices that I use that greatly alleviate those concerns for me, and I'll have videos on those coming up pretty soon. Anyway, that concern with the Loop Deck's positioning, honestly, comes from its knobs and its dials because when I'm using the taller loop deck my palms often graze or rest on knobs that to me feel like they have way too low of a tolerance for movement not to mention there isn't even any tactile feedback on them and while this might sound like I'm splitting hairs right out of the gate Honestly, what this means when compared to the X-Touch knobs, which require a conscious effort to turn and actually click with each value change, is I'm left feeling less confident in the loop deck when it comes to delicate movements and avoiding accidental inputs. Whereas with more tactile feedback, I can literally feel a tenth of a stop or two thirds of a stop changes in my hands before Lightroom even has a chance to register the edit itself. Also, the larger square buttons have no discernible actuation point, so they're left feeling a little bit spongy. Okay. Okay, now we're getting into user preference territory, but I really do believe that all of these can add up to have a pretty noticeable effect on the overall speed of the devices themselves. And we'll definitely pick apart speed here in a little bit, but for now, let's jump over to software. And first, let's take a look at MIDI to Lightroom. What MIDI to Lightroom offers is the ability to link any of its programmed adjustments, tool selections, keystrokes, combinations of commands, and even my holy grail, which is macros, to any of the knobs, buttons, or dials that it has available to it. Not to mention, it also has two layers, which allows the 16 customizable buttons to now be 32. And this allows for an overwhelming amount of customization options that you can cater to your exact editing style. And Though it is not as glamorous of a software interface as most popular programs, it is concise and clear in its functions and abilities. Also, I do want to mention that while this hasn't been the case for some time, I did have a pretty long stretch where MIDI to Lightroom software was experiencing a handful of bugs from like adjustments jumping around to simply not responding to the MIDI controller at all. But between switching out the cable that came with it and a few updates in the meantime, I haven't had any of those issues for quite a while. The Loop Deck software, on the other hand, is shiny, it's modern, it's very user-friendly, and it even chimes in with positive affirmations once you've connected to a program, which for an editor in the winter is very welcome. And while the software has had very few hiccups and glitches, and even only a couple missed keystrokes, coming from the MIDI to Lightroom setup to the Loop Deck has left me with a few head-scratching questions that I have for it right off the bat. 
first. While you are allowed to customize over 20 specific buttons and dials with a second set of functions available thanks to this adorable little function key, I am now at the mercy of LoopDeck's designated placement for those available buttons. There's a custom mode, which is awesome, but it doesn't allow for customization of all the keys in Lightroom, but it does offer customization for all the keys in other programs, which is bizarre and leaves me using a tab key that I've never used, a Windows key that I only use on accident. And it also has a designated export button that I can't change, which as somebody who predominantly does outsourced wedding edits is a button that I would really love to turn into something else. But honestly, what's most puzzling is no option for user-defined inputs or macros. And what this means for me is one glaringly omitted function that I use constantly, and that is Select Only Active. Select Only Active is a critical part of my batch editing workflow, as it allows me to jump across a handful of images, apply whatever batch edit I like, and then jump right back to a single image selection. And without it, I'm left with a sad workaround of using a keyboard hotkey that is close to the console. And this seems like such an odd omission when select left, select right, select all, or select none are included, which who uses select none? What am I gonna, what am I doing with this? Who, who needs this? Who does this help? Now to LoopDeck's credit, this wouldn't be an issue if Adobe allowed the same keyboard shortcut revamping support that they do with their other software. Although the CT does have macro support. So anyway, I digress. Regardless of those hangups, the layout that I've put together with it is actually really fun to use and it's super snappy and includes what I think is one of the Loop Deck's coolest functions, which is copy and paste. And with the press of the copy button, I can capture all the edits of an active image and apply it with the paste button at any time to another image or a bunch of other images. And that really allows me to rip through edits, especially like mixed lighting or jumping between a lead shooter and a second shooter. Segways are weird. Now, I've heard a lot of debates around whether or not interfaces like these can actually speed up your workflow, which is a fair concern as between that and wrist ergonomics, I don't really know what else they would offer you. But unfortunately, these discussions are so often had by folks that just don't give the systems a fair chance or worst yet, just don't understand how they work altogether. And while I don't claim to be an expert, as somebody who's used one of these for every non-retouching edit for almost a year and a half now, I'm willing to bet that they both have a significant amount of time that they could save for virtually anybody's workflow. And my example of 20 minutes saved, honestly, is pretty low compared to what I know I get from larger wedding edits, which could be 30, 40 minutes saved easily, if not more. And now all of a sudden with those 50 plus weddings, you're looking at multiple days of time that I've saved just from picking up this device. Now for speed, in the context of midi Lightroom versus Loop Deck, however, the takeaway is not as black and white. At the end of the day, both give me a significant boost with the main perk for MIDI to Lightroom being those macros that I mentioned and my sweet, sweet select only active. But with the Loop Deck, I've been able to establish this incredibly powerful setup where image selection, exposure, temperature, tint, and that sweet copy and paste feature that I mentioned are all available without ever having to lift my hands for anything other than say like local adjustments or brushing. Also something that I find incredibly fascinating is the fact that the Loop Deck can actually make adjustments in the library module, which is only interesting because Adobe last year introduced hardware acceleration for library module rendering. So now I could potentially have yet another speed boost, but we'll figure that out later. At this point, I wouldn't fault you for thinking I'd claim the Midi to Lightroom setup as the victor, but sadly, it, it just can't be that simple because believe it or not, I really want the winner to be the Loop Deck. It's got slightly fewer bugs, which is a huge plus, and if macro support was added to it, I guarantee you that would be the last day that I use the Behringer. Not to mention, there's also support for Premiere Pro, Capture One, a handful of other programs that I use all the time, although some of them like Capture One are in beta, so I've held back on testing those out and will definitely do future updates later. All that said, if $250 is out of your photo doohickey budget, I don't think that you're settling for less with the Mini to Lightroom. It's capable of 95% of what the Loop Deck does with a few tricks of its own. But if picking apart button layouts, manually programming keys, and even making stickers for buttons that you don't want to memorize doesn't give you like a warm, fuzzy feeling inside, I have no doubts that you will absolutely love the Loop Deck. 
and I do see a clear advantage in either one of them for saving somebody time in large format editing like weddings, for example. Heck, if the thought of any more retouching or dumping more hours into wedding edits is something that doesn't appeal to you at all, definitely come find me at alexguyphoto.com and we'll see if we can get you set up to get some of your life back. I do wanna give special thanks to Valeria at Loop Deck for helping get this to me, as well as to RS Yafe for developing the incredible, bizarrely free MIDI to Lightroom software. And if you do snag it and you do like it, definitely think about sending them a donation because it ups my odds of getting more updates. If you decide you'd like to purchase either the Loop Deck or the Behringer X Touch Mini, you can use either of the links in the description below, which would greatly help us keep making videos just like this. Honestly, buying anything through those links absolutely helps us and is greatly appreciated. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have either one of these devices and what you think about them. If you'd like to see me do a video on setting up the MIDI to Lightroom, it's definitely something I can look into because there's already videos on it, but they're like 20 minutes long and I'm not exactly sure why. And let me know how I'm doing because I look forward to making videos just like this in the future. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.